Setting up research from the beginning is really a very difficult thing to do. And it's amazing how quickly, quite in general, uh, things did get going. When you've got a bright young researchers who are being successful, the university does what it can to sort of provide them with the environment so they can develop their research. But there were these three different science departments all together and th th there was an amazing amount of cooperation both within the department and to some extent within the between departments. There was hardly any administrative or bureaucratic hurdles put in our way. People just filled in around us and helped us to develop the things we wanted to do. And so the lab grew. Um, you know, by the late 1980s, we were 70 or 80 people. We were, I think, uh, edged it, in, in that youngness, uh, and that did make a difference. And, and, and you know, people were incredibly cooperative. To do research, you have to be committed, and it has to come from yourself. Okay, you have to be self-driven. I've, I've worked on toleration all, all the while since since 1985 and it's still a very, very significant part of my research interest. The founders of the university or the people who are instrumental in founding the university were very committed to the university being a place that would be open to everyone, irrespective of their religious belief or, or lack of belief. We've had each year a very significant figure speaking about toleration, and that's gone on since 1980, no, maybe 1982 or three. So it's 30 years, it's 30 years. It was the very early days of computers, the very early days of being able to do molecular graphics and it turned out I was actually quite good at it. So that's when things just took off in terms of the Harvard connection, in terms of the software being licensed to a major American company. Once you've got the structure of the protein, actually being able to look at it and interrogate it and ask questions about the protein. That's where my, my work was. That started very early on with some of the very early uh, 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 microcomputers, little things, but then some of the very first graphics workstations that came along in the mid-1980s. Um, and it was, yeah, it was quite revolutionary at the time. Crystals are beautiful, perfect things, highly orderly, but if somewhere you have find a little hole, a tiny little atom removed or a bigger atom put in or whatever, um, th that changes the properties of the system. A particular way of finding what was going on in, in, the, in, in the system was to use an effect called the Auger effect, which was a reasonably obscure effect at the time. And just having a cup of coffee in the, in the department about two or three years after I, I came, uh, they said, oh, we're now doing the Auger effect. And I immediately told them what the Auger effect was. I just happened to have been in a course which this thing had, had been done. And all of a sudden they thought I was an expert in the Auger effect. And indeed, I did carry on um, studying that and, and related phenomena for qu quite a long time. And the Morell family, J.B. Morell in particular, had a very great desire that work should be done on toleration and on the significance of toleration because in his own life and in the life of Quakers generally, religious intolerance had been a very, very disabling um, feature. So, so the history of the university itself is a history of um, an institution founded in order to secure toleration. And the establishment of the um, Morell Centre for Toleration at, at York is a, reflection, is a reflection of that. I believe it's the only centre for toleration. I believe, I'm pretty sure it's the only one in the country. It may well be the only one in the world. What we got involved in in 85, 86 was the design of changes to the insulin molecule to stop it from aggregating. So it was actually just a monomeric, just a, mono, just a single molecule that was very active. And those monomeric active insulins transformed the therapy for, for, for diabetics. But if somebody had told me that the University of York would be ranked in some fantastically strong position relative to other universities that were founded in the region of 50 years ago, I, I, I said, oh, you're, you're being a gross optimist. 
they had billion dollar drugs and we were you know our work was important in providing the insights on the back of which the the, the, the researchers could, could make those changes so it had a, had a huge impact